In this video, we're going to make three different types of clasp. This is a toggle clasp, which is great for a bracelet. You can see one end slots into the eye of the clasp or the loop, and it holds well for a bracelet. Equally, you can use it for a necklace. So that's one. Um, the other style is a doubled fish hook, which is great for heavy beads, and then just the single normal fish hook. So I'm using 0 0.8 or 20 gauge wire, this is copper wire, and I'm going to make a tiny little link or circle at the very end of the wire. Then I place my round nose pliers just next to that link and bring the wire around to form a bigger loop, which creates the hook of the clasp, rather like um, a shepherd's crook. Cut it off, leaving a bit of a stem, and then with your round nose pliers, you can create a circle or a link at one end, which can be spiraled up exactly where you want it to sit. So just under the fish hook, and there you have it. Now this is a bit soft because the wire is soft, so we're going to hammer it to work harden. So just gently hammer the very, very end to flatten and spread it, and also to work harden it. And it's as simple as that. So there's your simple fish hook clasp. Now you can also do that with a wrapped loop. So again, just the same thing, little hook, squeeze that together for the very end, create the hook part, there's your hook, and then instead of doing the spiral end, you do a wrapped loop. So around the pliers to make a circle and then wrap just above that circle, just under your fish hook and cut off the excess or cut it off the spool. And then just use your chain nose pliers just to make sure the end is completely squished down and there's no spiky bits projecting out. Again, you will need to work hard on it. So just gently stroke hammer the very, very end of that clasp to make it tough and be able to take wear and tear. And I'm just going to the very end again. And just make sure it's adjusted and it looks exactly as you want it. So those are your two very simple fish hooks. Now, for the doubled fish hook, we want to obviously double the wire. So leave a bit of excess wire and fold it in half. This is about an inch and a half down. Now take your flat nose pliers and make sure that the wires are completely doubled up together. So just squish it together so it's just like one piece of wire, these two bits. Now leave about an inch extending and wrap that excess around the rest of the stem and that will seal in that doubled end of wire. So just wrap it, tiny little movements, and take your time to get the hand positions right so that you feel comfortable that you can wrap it nice and neatly. There's no rush when you're making these. Cut off any excess so you don't have to have a big load of wrapped up wire there. And then again you want to cut it from the spool so it's easy to work with. So there's your wrapped end with your stem. And now we're going to create the hook in that doubled end of wire. I'm just neatening up that little stem there so there's no spiky ends. So take your round nosed pliers and form a hook. Spend a bit of time doing that because you want to sort of, you could push in from the back with your finger to create a bit of a curve in that hook. So loop it round your pliers and form the doubled hook. And then just make a little lip at the very, very end. Just a little lip, which helps to, you know, ease it into the eye of the clasp at the other end of the necklace. So this, with this, I've left a bit of a stem to show you. You can always add a bead, say the beads that are on your necklace, and then create the link. And that just adds a decorative or a bit of color to your clasp so you can see that it's not a clasp that's been bought 
from a shop. It's been customised and it's bespoke exactly to suit whatever piece you're making. And this doubled um, fish hook is good for heavy beads or a you know heavy chain or it takes a lot more weight than the single 0.8 wire one that we did initially. Now the last one is the toggle and the toggle clasp is great for bracelets. Of course it can be used for necklaces too but just cut a longish piece. Um, I would say this is about three, three and a half inches. Depends how big you want to make this and place your tips of your pliers at the center and fold the wires over so that they cross over at the center creating a little link right in the middle. Now we're going to toughen up those wires so I'm holding it there and I'm pulling and twisting to straighten and work harden and strengthen each wire on the side so this will make your your clasp a little bit tougher and have more wear and you know wearability I suppose the word is. So there we go we've got work hardened wires on each side of that central loop and now we're going to create spirals on each side so like a little circle and then spiral tightly in and then I'm going to work on the other side so that I don't have a spiky end in my hand. So again, a little, like making a little head pin and then squeeze that together and then spiral the wire tightly around itself so that it's brought in towards that central loop. So once you've done one, turn it over and continue on the other side because you want them to be equidistant to that central loop. And then again, just to give it a bit more firmness and work harden it again, just hammer the very, very ends, just the spirals. Don't hammer the center bit with the crossed over wires, just those two spirals, because don't forget, clasps really do take a lot of wear and tear. Now for the other end, the eye of the clasp, um, actually we'll do the stem first. We'll just do a little stem to uh, sit at that center bit. So that has got a little loop and then on the other side another little loop because if you hook your uh, your toggle straight onto the necklace it's going to sit too close. So this is just like um, you know a, a stem with two links and that will just make the toggle or t-bar bit of your clasp. So let's just hook that on and then close that link up in between those lovely spirals. And there's your toggle or T-bar. Um, and then we'll move on to the other end of the clasp, which will be the eye of the clasp, which is a big link. So you could use a pen. I've got bail maker pliers here, but you could use wrap around a pen. You don't want it too circular, so you can squish that and sort of make it a bit more oblong or oval as long as it can fit the spirals um, because if you're putting that on on your wrist for a bracelet you don't want it so tight that you can't you know put it on yourself and then once you've got the right aperture you just like making a, a, the a wrap link really it's just a large wrap link you're going to wrap the excess wire under that link and just you know take your time because it's soft wire so you just do it slowly if you had a lot of wire to wrap and you didn't want to keep wrapping it you could always make a little spiral there but I've just cut it off didn't have that much and making sure that it's nice and neat and no sticky out ends that's really important let's give that a bit of a a hammer on the steel block, not the wrapped bit, but only the end of that link that toughens uh, and work hardens the link so it's nice and strong. And then you've got the, the little stem which will obviously 
go onto the other side of your necklace. But this is how you just feed it through. The T-bar just feeds through and it sits within that gap. Um, so that's how you do it. Now this is just the eye of the clasp for the other necklaces. You can do that on your round nose pliers. You make them much smaller. And again, it's like a wrap loop. There's nothing complicated about it. You just keep uh, wrapping the excess wire, cut off anything that you don't want. You don't want it to be too wrapped underneath the link. And there you've got your wrap loop. And always make sure the ends are nice and squished. There's no sort of little pokey out bits. <clears throat> There's nothing worse than wearing jewellery that scratches you or picks uh, on your clothes. So I'm just going to hammer the end, make that uh, work hardened, nice and tough. And then again, you can bring that into match whatever you're making, add a bead and create a wrap loop at the other end. So this, you know, just by, by adding a bead that blends in with the piece you're making, this is how you customize your pieces. There will be no other clasp, you know, available to buy like that. It shows it's completely unique and it's handmade and it doesn't come from, you know, a, a, a factory and it hasn't been churned out. So always think that even your clasps are important in your work. And that's how you can create all your own little ends to your necklaces.